Hi, it's Tarrant. And it's Stella from Meeple University on the Dash Tower for a pocket playthrough video series where we usually play a few runs of the game. In this video, we will show you Rain Absolute, a game designed by Adam Walker and published by the Square Mile Studio. It is a relatively short game and so we will get a full playthrough in this video. We're using a prototype copy of the game and so the rules and components may not be final. Let's get to the table. Hi everyone, and here we are for our pocket playthrough for Rain Absolute. I'll be playing as the human raiders. And I'll be playing as elves. And ultimately this is a, a card driven battle grid game and we are attempting to defeat the other player's liege. So my liege is this card here, my war chief, my strongest card. Mine is Gwyn, my strongest card, although not very strong. It's an elf. Yes. And so that, that's one thing that you'll instantly see. These numbers here, is the, they're the strengths of these units. And you'll immediately see that my human raiders are stronger than Stella's elves. However, I do have special power, which I'll explain later. Yes, so it will balance out. So, what we will do, remove these help cards and we'll go into the setup. And so, we'll quickly show you setup. We shuffle all of our units. And then we draw cards to see who goes first. So, I will... I've got this one, it's a three. Mine's a one, so you go first. Okay, I go first. Discard that. Discard. Alright, so... I draw one of my units and I look at it so that I know what it is. Stella doesn't look at it and then we place it face down in the middle of the table. I'll pop it here. This is the, the start of the battle grid. And Stella picks one and has to place it next to mine. Then I pick one and I have to place it adjacent to at least one of mine. Can be next to one of Stella's but it has to be at least next to one of mine. Okay, and then we continue doing this. Uh, so we're just going to speed through this as we do it. Now, this is my Elder Tree. This is the one as an uh, elf. I have to place this last. I cannot move this. And this let grants me power of making my other unit stronger by drawing two reinforcement cards um, each round rather than just the one, the normal one. So because I can't move this around, I'm going to try to also put it away um, as possible from Tarrant. And this has a zero, so it's very weak. It, uh, Tarrant, can just, Tarrant can just come and then chop it off and then it's gone. Yes, but by putting it so far away from me, uh, that is challenging. But it does give you more reinforcements, so I'll actually give you the reinforcement deck. Right. Okay, start with you. Yep, so it starts with me. So, alright, so I'm now going to take my first turn of the game. And each turn is in two steps, taking an action and then taking a reinforcement card. And your primary actions are move and attack. So, I'm going to move first into here to get myself into a good attacking position and then I'm going to reinforce. So I take this card you can see this is the card, Stella can't see what that is. Um, this is actually, it's a green green coloured card here so I play it immediately. So you have to reveal it yes. for the green ones, yeah. Correct, and it says player may examine one of the opponent's units along with that unit's uh, cards. So I am going to have a look at what this unit is. So this is Stella's Guards. It has a strength of five. So that would be useful for me in planning. The other action is Doom, which we're going to explain later. I'm going to pass. So I don't have to take an, any action. So I'm going to just reinforce. Because of my Elder Tree, I get to do two. So that is the first one. So I know that the Terran's seen this. So it's to my benefit to reinforce this. Taron doesn't know what that is, so he might think that, oh, you know, this is something like really good or really strong. So, there you go. All are in there. Okay, so I... So that's now too dangerous for me to really go after. It's, so, I need to... I need to try to press the advantage before Stella gets too many reinforcements. 
So I am going to attack through here. I'm going to use this P this card to attack this one. So I've got a Clash. Berserker here. Ooh. A Berserker nine. has effectively a strength of nine. It's four plus five in attack. And Stella has a Dryad, which is two. So, so I mine. defeat it. Yes, so however, mine after attack is resolved, if defeated when defending, which I am, the elf player draw four reinforcement. Any of the green ones are ignored and discarded, and the remaining blue reinforcement I immediately distribute to any units of my choice. So essentially, this is a, a sacrificial thing for me yeah. to strengthen my other units. So um, unfortunately, I draw two. Two green ones. So I'm going to discard the, the two green, unfortunately. And then I've got this two, which I'm going to distribute. Uh, one is to here. And the other one is to here. So I'm trying to strengthen all my front units here. Yes. All right. And so I flip my unit face down again and then finish my turn with one reinforcement. And so this is the card I've got here. I'm going to, I don't know if Stella's going to attack here or not. So I'm going to, you know, this unit's looking strong, so I'm going to reinforce. Yeah, so by the way, you can always look at what um, your cards are um, and just put it back so that, you know, if you forget, you can look at your own unit, not your opponent's unit. My turn. I am going to attack you with this. Okay, so I have revealed what this is, so Stella does know. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. my, my Berserker only has four strength in defense. Because I know that if Terran's attacking, I have no chance, so I have to attack first. Yep. So um, my Enchantress special power is to draw two cards at the start of resolving battle. If the card is blue, is resolved, otherwise ignored. So um, this is actually a good one. So I've got six defense and two attacking. So given your you're attacking, it's a total of six against four. Correct. So you defeat my berserker. Now this gets discarded after um, battle. Yes. Um, I'll put it here. Let's just put it away. Yep. And then um, that goes back there. Yep. And you advance into the space Correct. that you're attacking. And then I get to draw uh, two of this, which I can choose to put any way I want, which I'm going to put here. Now that Terran knows what it is, it's best now that it's stronger. So I say. Okay. <laughs> so let's see what I've got there. I might have the capability to attack and get in behind the line, but I'm worried about these reinforcements happening in the front. So I'm going to use, let me see what this is. Yep. I'm going to use this one to attack this one. Let's open. So I've got a champion of seven. I've got guards of five, plus I get to draw two cards. Yep, so same as the enchantress, but in a reinforcement power. So I have this. So I get to cancel, but you don't have any. Yep. And it's two against, uh, seven against seven, so. Uh, no, this is attack only, and oh, you're sorry, defending. Yes. So it's still seven against five. Mm -hmm. So, so you I defeat your guards. And then I advance into this spot here. Let me just remind myself what I've got behind the line. Okay. Same here. And then I get one reinforcement. And I will put that under here. My turn. Now I know what this is. I'm attacking you with this. So. This is my guard. And yep. you are the champion. So seven, mine is eight, or actually nine. Is nine. Nine. Okay, so that defeats my champion. My gut goes there, and this gets discarded. Yep. Now I can reinforce. Another two reinforcements. Mm -hmm. So this is my reinforcement, and I will place it here. All right. So I'm going to use one of my special units. Uh, revealing what it is. This is the free riders and the free riders can take two moves or move and attack Not attack and move and not attack twice But this will allow me to break behind Stella's lines more quickly. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna move 
two steps down to here because you know I can see a pathway and I want to I want to chop down that tree. Stella's getting far too many reinforcements from oh, no. it. Then I get one reinforcement. And I've got the um, the immediate card which lets me look at one of Stella's units. And so I could look at this one which has a reinforcement, but I want to find out where the queen is. So I'll discard that, I'll take that. I'm going to see if this is Stella's liege. It's not, it's rangers. Okay. So a weak one there. All right, that's my turn. Created a big hole in the battlefield here though. My turn. I'll attack Terran here for a reason clear later. Not because it's a pesky soldier trying to come through. Okay, mm -hmm. so you've got a lot of bolstering there. Yep. However, I've got a card that cancels all of your reinforcement cards oh, for no. that attacker. So these ones come out. Oh no! However, I can draw two at the start of resolving battle if the card is resolved, otherwise it's ignored. Okay, so it's still possible for you to cancel my cancel, actually. Correct. So, okay, so draw your cards. Mm -hmm. So here is not used because it's the green card. And here I get to add that, but then... It adds to your defense and I cancel it with this anyway. Yes. So. These ones are gone, Ooh. so it's 4 against 12, so I defeat your Enchantress. But all of your um, reinforcements gone. Yes, so it is weaker again now. So at the end of my turn I do uh, draw 2 reinforcement, mm -hmm. and I will reinforce it here. Okay, now I, I really want... I really want to get rid of this elder tree. You're getting far too much benefit out of it. No. So I'm going to move two once again with the power of the free rider and then draw another reinforcement card and I'm going to add it. I'm going to add it here. A bit of defense for this space. All right. So I don't think I can actually defend my tree at the moment because it takes me two turns to go there. I mean, if I lose it, it's okay. Um, as long as, you know, I can still try to reinforce this as much as I could. So I'm going to try to move here. I'm going to start the um, offensive now that I've got a few reinforcements around. Okay. Um, and then I draw two cards still at the... Um, this I'm going to draw one first. Yep. Ooh. This is actually good. Uh oh. This is, I may take another turn. So all other cards must be uh, resolved or placed before commencing new turn. Okay, so I'll draw my second one. And I will put it right here. Okay. So and a strong attack behind enemy lines. I will attack you. Like this is this is reinforced. I can only attack this or this. This is reinforced and this is not. So we'll see what happened here. Okay. So that is my Ooh. war chief. And your guards also have a strength of eight. So we both destroyed. It's eight against eight. It's mutual destruction. Mm -hmm. But, but because my liege Ooh. is destroyed, lucky. That is the end of the game. Wow. And Stella wins the game. Oh, good game, Tara. Thank you. Good <laughs> so we're going to quickly explain the last mechanic that we haven't mentioned, is which is Doom. Yes, so um, it's the third option on your turn other than to move and attack. And Doom, when you call Doom, uh, very simply, each player, starting with the player to your left and going around the table, chooses one of the units to discard from the board. And you have to do it as well. And you don't get reinforcements when you call Doom. And really, this is a mechanic to utilize your numbers advantage at the end of the game. So essentially, if, you're, if it's three against one, you know, the board is uh, limitless in terms of how far you can move. And so, you know, instead of just having you run your liege away into a corner where no one can chase it down, you just wipe doom. out the rest of their army and call doom. And so it's yes. a way of yeah, utilizing your numbers advantage at the end of the game. 
they are also at least I know there's um there's a card um that helps with that so you can stop the doom from happening for your um, unit to be wiped out so that's that's the card so yep. it's good I, I don't know uh, if there are more how many will this be in the final game so it's good to know that there's this one that can affect gameplay yes yep I can very much turn the turn the end game if it's there um, yeah so we played with just two of the the different factions the different races in the game uh, there are, I think, four in the base game, yep. and so some additionals yeah. through expansions. So this, um, the other ones in the game, so you've got... We've got the Human Empire. Uh, the Human Empire has... They're sort of not quite as strong as the Human Raiders, but their king can be defended by other units being around. And there's this also is the Orcs. Yep. So this king would be getting extra defense for every one of these. Um, there's the Ox race, which they actually have, uh, their leash is very weak because you get to choose it and your opponents know where your leash is. They destroy it and this actually moves to other Ox of your choice. So it's different style of play. It effects, effectively forces you to wipe out all of the orcs. That's correct. To win the game. The correct, but yes. you know that the leash is always going to be fairly weak. Now there's also the expansion pack that we've got here, which is yep. the um, the Hidden Realms. Yep. And it comes with a few races. So there's yep. one here, Dwarves. Yep, there's Dwarves. Dwarves start the game very strong defensively and quite weak from an attacking perspective. So they've got extra uh, defense on all of these. But if you survive long enough, you can start forging weapons, which increases your attacking strength. So got to play the long game with the dwarves mm, and there's rattling so plenty of them swarming heaps with rats. heaps of rats yes so different strategy again there but they're all very weak but they can swarm together as well and um and attack as one to some extent and there's the undead yeah so the undead um lots of graveyards and skeletons essentially graveyards so you'll be raising skeleton. raising skeletons as you go through the game so yeah, yeah lots of different uh Lots of different ways this game can be played. That's correct. All these different races uh, give different flavors to the game. So, yes. All right, and that is the, we got through a full game, but that is the end of our pocket playthrough for Rain Absolute. And that's our pocket playthrough for Rain Absolute. We hope you enjoyed this video. When we film this video, Rain Absolute is going to Kickstarter. So we've put the link in their sign up page in the video description below so you can get notified when it goes live on Kickstarter. If you enjoyed this video, please help us by hitting that like button and subscribe to the Dice Tower if you haven't already done so. And if you have any questions, comments or feedback, please write them in the comment section below. Until next time.